Good morning. I'm glad you're uh, joining me this morning for our devotional. This week we are, of course, focused upon the parables of Jesus. And uh, today we're going to be in chapter 20 of the book of Matthew. And we're going to be talking about the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Now, I've been fascinated with the parables. I had one professor who said that uh, the parables are like a very engaging story with a plot twist. And uh, this is a very good way to engage your audience if you're telling a story uh, with, with a surprise in it. And, uh, and that's what Jesus did with these parables. And certainly with this one. Um, so let's start reading uh, from Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at the first hour in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. So let's, uh, let's stop there. Um, and just talk about a few things. Uh, the kingdom of heaven uh, in the parables refers to uh, the time and place where God's rule and reign um, is present. It doesn't uh, necessarily mean where you go when you die, um, although in other places in Scripture that may be what it, what's referring to. But here it's about uh, what's happening here and now. And, uh, uh, for example, when, when we show kindness to someone in need or, or we offer counsel and comfort to somebody who's hurting, then the kingdom of God is present. Um, as our character and our identity, our character and identity is being conformed into the image of Christ, his will done in our life, then our life becomes the kingdom of heaven. Like the Lord's Prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's, let's move on. The workers who were hired at about five in the afternoon came and received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Let's stop here for a second. The workers were each paid a denarius. If you look it up, um, a denarius uh, was uh, the normal amount that was paid for a full day's wage for a skilled labor. Even a Roman soldier would have been happy to receive a denarius for a day's work. Um, so th uh, these workers were more like the day laborers you might see outside of Home Depot. They'd be more than happy to receive a full wage of a, of a journeyman car carpenter. This was a generous pay, for sure. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne, borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Now context is everything. Jesus tells this parable 
very shortly after Peter asked this question uh, in Matthew 19. We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Peter wanted to know what reward would be given to those who gave up everything to follow Jesus, like himself. Now, the, the questions that are raised are uh, certainly, uh, what is justice here? And certainly, what is fair? Um, and really, at the heart of it is the, is the issue of, of God's grace being so generous as to be offensive to us. It, it's, this, this really uh, goes against our, our own nature. God's grace is extravagant. It's totally beyond the limits. Further into context, planting and maintaining and harvesting vineyards in the Middle East in, in the first century was hard, strenuous work. And, and the harvest came right after the heat of summer. So it was very difficult. Very often additional laborers were required to get all the work done in time. The owner of this vineyard went to the marketplace at the first hour, that would be 6 a.m., to find workers for the day. The landowner promised to pay whatever is right. Now, the landowner, whose decision to pay all the work is the same, uh, this was an act of mercy, not injustice. It represents God, whose grace and mercy are shed abundantly upon those of his choosing. Looking into Romans 9 at uh, verse 15 and 16, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. The first work, uh, the, excuse me, the first group of workers in the vineyard resented receiving the same wage as the last ones. Their attitude was very similar to the, to the Pharisees uh, who were following Jesus around. They were angry because Jesus' teaching was saying that um, the poor, uh, the, the hungry, the, the, the sinners were on an equal footing with the Pharisees. And uh, that, that just was too much for them because they, they were the ones who were following the rules, following the law exactly, or what they believed were. Exactly. Um, but we, as Christians, should rejoice when others come to, come to faith and come to the Savior, as we should rejoice in the service that they would do for, for him. The landlord owner did not wrong the early workers by doing a favor to their fellow workers. He did not withhold from them one penny of what was theirs. The trouble with the early workers was that they were jealous. They simply begrudged the owner's generosity. They murmured not because the Lord had deprived them, but because he had been so merciful to the others. The parable teaches us that in God's eyes, we are important, we are valuable. And we're different, but impactful in our own way. We have different roles, gifts, and talents. And we each ought to contribute to the best of our ability without comparing uh, ourselves. Because God's gift of, of salvation is without comparison. It is an extravagant gift. God seeks out those who are lost. He hires those he shouldn't, pays more than they deserve, and gives them his most precious treasure, his only son for free. Undeserved grace. This is sometimes called the scandal of grace. I didn't get saved until I was 26 years old, and then I probably wouldn't have if it weren't for my wife, Susie. I feel like one of the last workers getting in to the vineyard just before the end of the daylight, and I am very grateful. We are all like the last worker. We are all like the thief on the cross next to Jesus who received God's amazing grace at the last moment. Let's go out today living in that, that grace and enjoying that extravagance of the God of the kingdom. 
uh, I want to end with uh, with a prayer that is in Romans 11 verses 33 to 36. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor, who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, Jesus, for this, uh, for this lesson, Lord, that uh, we should not be comparing ourselves to one another, but we should only be looking to you, Lord, because you are a generous God. And so, Lord, help us, Lord, to keep our, our, our eyes uh, up and focused upon you and what is, what is good and what is noble and uh, what is praiseworthy. So thank you, Lord. Uh, be with us during this day. Bless our, our families and our church, Lord. Bless our nation in these trying times as well, Lord. We just, we just ask for your mercy and your grace and your love, Lord, to rain down. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. All right. God bless you all. Have a great day.